This is Control. Scavenger, do you copy? Negative. Scavenger, this is an order. Take the shot. I think I'm not alone here. The interior you just saw was entirely graded using the Hanser Pro 2.0 inside of Premiere Pro. Now what is the answer? It's basically a film stock emulator that claims to turn your digital footage into something that looks like actual film. In this review I'll cover all the different features of the Hanser Pro 2.0, have a professional color gradist compete against the Hanser using DaVinci Resolve and I will tell you if the Hanser is worth the price. Once you've installed the Hanser and open up a project inside of Premiere Pro, you can search for the plugin here in the effects tab, the Answer Pro 2.0. Now instead of just dragging the plugin straight on top of your clip here, a little tip, use an adjustment layer instead. This will make uh, the performance better in some cases. Let's have a look at the features of the Answer 2.0. In the input tab, you can choose what type of footage you have. My shot here is S-Log3 shot on a Sony A7S 3 Let's see if we have it here. Underneath the camera profile, you can basically do exposure and white balance. D-Fringe helps you with chromatic aberrations of your footage because this can affect the enhancer effects like bloom and halation, which we'll look at later. Since my shot is pretty clean here, I don't need this. Now comes one of the most important tabs, Film. You can choose from 60 plus different film stock options, uh, for instance, like the Kodak Koda Chrome 64 that I have here. I'm going with the Kodak Vision 3 250D, which is the film stock used for Interstellar. In the tab Film Developer, you can change things like contrast, gamma, or color. I'm gonna add uh, 30 contrast here to make the image pop a bit. Gamma correction in the answer is basically contrast applied to the midtones of the image. I like it as is, so I leave it at zero. Color separation is basically something similar like Lumetri Colors Vibrance setting. You can start at 100 and then reduce the value and the saturation of the most intense colors will go down. Finally, Color Boost is Dehancer's more subtle version of saturation. I'll go ahead and add 25. The tab Film Compression lets you push your highlights more towards the mid-tones. This can sometimes help you if you've overexposed your highlights and they are a bit blown out. In the Expand tab, you can define black and white tones for your look. I'll leave them as they are since I like what I see currently and I'll disable it again. Now, the Print tab is very important again. You can choose on what film your final product will be printed. I'm again using Interstellar as a reference and go with the Kodak 2383 Print. Here, boom. Because I chose this option, I can now adjust my target white to minus two. Let's do that. Basically, this means that you can set the temperature of the film anywhere between 5,500 and 6,500 Kelvin. So now my temperature is slightly warmer and I like that. If you enable analog range limiter, this will basically make uh, the image a tad softer and improve details in the shadows and highlights. In the color head section, you can adjust a bunch of color values. For instance, uh, if your story of your film happens in Mexico, you obviously have to adjust the first slider towards yellow like this and the third slider towards red like so, because we all know that's what Mexico looks like, right? In the tab Film Grain, you can choose from a bunch of presets or if you go with Custom Profile, you can fine tune your grain. Good to know here probably is that there is a big difference between positive and negative film type, with positive being more subtle and negative will give you a brutal amount of grain. Let me show you. I mean, look at this. Bam! I personally stick to the presets and I'm gonna go with 65mm film at ISO 50, which is very subtle. Halation is one of those features that can make your footage give this distinct vintage vibe. What it does basically is create red to orange halos around highlights and contrasting edges. Let me show you in extreme values in the custom setting what I mean. Let's put both diffusions to the maximum. Voila. And I think you get the point. I'm gonna go ahead and disable uh, halation for this example here because I don't like the look right here. Bloom lets you add a diffusion effect around your highlights. This feature is super nice to have because traditionally I shoot my footage with something like a mist filter in front of my lens and then this look is baked into the footage whether you and your client like it or not. The answer gives you a lot of control for a gorgeous bloomy look. 
Now, this effect is probably more for stuff like fashion videos or maybe a dream sequence, so I'm gonna disable it here as well. Film damage is pretty self-explanatory. Let me just give you a quick example of what you could do here, like this, and then when you play through the clip, it looks like that. I mean, lots and lots of film damage, but I'm gonna disable it for our example because I don't think it fits here. The vignette is, well, a vignette effect, I think pretty self-explanatory as well. Film breath is basically a historically undesired side effect of accidental exposure changes from frame to frame. Basically, this lets you simulate an analog version of flickering. Now, gate weave is the mechanical move of a film as it is pulled through the frame window of a film camera, projector or film scanner, basically here. In the monitor tab, you can check your exposure with false color. Really neat feature because you can then tell without trusting your TikTok damaged eyes if the footage is exposed properly. If you think you've overdone it a bit with the vintage look, you can tone down the overall impact in output. If you like your look and for example have a bunch of footage that is similar, you can export the dehancer setting as a LUT. Now I'm not a professional color grader myself, but I have a friend who is way better at it and mainly does color grading. I challenged him to color grade a sequence out of the short film I shot for this review. My input? Make it look like Interstellar and only use DaVinci Resolve native tools. This is the grade he came up with versus mine. Now it's up to you. Do you prefer my dehancer grades or my professional color greatest friends grade? Let me know in the comments below. Now let's get to the $400 question. Is dehancer actually worth it? Wait a second, Mike, you ask. Doesn't dehancer cost around $450? Not, Not for, for you. you. If you use the code MAC10, you'll get 10% off the full price of dehancer and a virtual high five from me. Now, for me personally, I was actually about to buy the Hanser and was then approached by them to make this review. For your info, no money changed hands and they actually motivated me to say whatever I want about the plugin. Let's get to the good. The Hanser produces gorgeous results in a very short amount of time. The looks you can get with a few clicks are actually amazing in my humble opinion. And I also think it's more than just a film stock emulator. I use the Hanser on corporate projects for big clients like Google or Coop, which is the leading retailer here in Switzerland. Obviously without things like film grain or halation, but the results are beautiful. Now onwards to the not so good. The answer is very hardware hungry. I have a fully spec'd up Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip and I would say that's a pretty beefy machine. But even this beast sometimes struggles to replay footage at full resolution with a lot of dehancer effects applied. Now this might be partly because of Premiere Pro which is notoriously poorly optimized and a cluster of software. If you're not editing on something like an M1 Ultra or faster, also PC equivalent, you'll probably spend quite some time on rendering before being able to review the footage. And let's be honest, that sucks a little bit. Which neatly brings us to pricing. About $400 for a plugin, given that you've used my code MAC10, is quite pricey. There's no sugar coating that. But given that this is a once in a lifetime payment and you get upgrades for free, I think this is absolutely worth it for professionals. I feel like my color grading game has stepped up a level since I've started using Dehancer. Now don't expect Dehancer to create instant miracles and make everything look like a Hollywood blockbuster fever dream, but you know what? You can expect good footage to look even better. If you liked the video, consider subscribing and liking the damn thing and leave a comment with your thoughts about Dehancer. Until then, keep creating and I'll see you in the next video. Cut!